Yeah. Let's just start it. We'll so show you both no go in tandem. You go first. In tandem? <laughs> no, not in tandem. Yeah, why not? Who's first? Why don't we just both I'll go, go first. How are we going? Yeah. Hey, welcome to Burn Youth Online. We are so glad to have you. What next? <laughs> Jackson, roll the intro. Well, I'm gonna be out in 20 minutes. Yeah, okay. exactly. <laughs> um, okay, I'm gonna start again. Okay, yeah. All right, sounds again. good. Welcome to Burn Youth. We're so glad to have you. Hope you're doing well. Uh, check the description if you're watching this in the YouTube to join us in the Zoom. Jackson, roll that intro.
Yo, 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 Burn Youth Online, we're back. We live, baby, on the Mega Zoom. Hey, if you're watching this on YouTube or by your lonesome self, stop it right now. Go to the link in the description. We're watching this as a youth family. And then afterwards, we're gonna have some hubs time. It's gonna be fantastic. Hey, if you're new to Burn Youth and you don't know me, my name is Hamish. My wife, Meg and I, we're the youth pastors here. And we just wanna say thank you for tuning in. We hope this feels like family. And we can't wait to see you back in this building in person, hopefully, God willing, in a few weeks as restrictions ease. Hey, let's pray before I get into my message tonight. Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you so much for Burn Youth. I thank you so much for all the leaders and the volunteers. I thank you for all the students who tune in every week and make youth happen, Lord. Uh, and lastly, though, we, we just thank you for you, God. We thank you for the provision that you give us, Lord, and the protection that you've given us in this time, Lord. We love you, God. You're amazing. And everybody said, A. Man, Now, if you're excited for Burn Youth Online tonight, if you're excited to hear the Word of God tonight, I need you to smash your favorite emoji in the chat. Open up the Zoom chat. Smash your favorite emoji right now if you're excited to hear the Word of God tonight. Come on, somebody. Come on. Now, let me get straight into it. Now, when I was a kid, when I was a kid, I didn't know anything about what it meant to have a broken heart. I'd never had my heart broken before. I lived in a fairy tale. I lived in a fairy land where nothing bad happened to me. I thought that having a broken heart was similar to Cinderella when she couldn't find a nice dress for the ball, you know, and she cried out to a fairy godmother and she popped up and, you know, turned the pumpkin into a carriage and whatnot. I thought having a broken heart was Aladdin when he couldn't get that girl and so he rubbed the lamp and a genie rocked up and helped him with his problems. I had no idea what it meant to have a broken heart. I thought having a broken heart was similar to mm, maybe your sister trampling all over your Lego creation or your mum sending you to your room for talking back to her, or, or maybe when you lose a game of you know or Monopoly. That's what I thought having a broken heart was like. But over time, you grow up. And over time, you experience the real world. And you go through some pretty amazing experiences and some pretty horrible ones. Maybe you've lost a family member who was close to you. Maybe your parents have separated. Maybe you've been rejected by someone who should have embraced you. Or maybe you were abused or mistreated by someone who you should have been able to trust. Maybe one of those horrible things have happened to you in your life. Maybe someone a long time ago did it to you. 
and you've never recovered from it. Maybe something happened to you that was beyond anyone's control and, and, and it's hurt you till this day. Or maybe you made a bad decision. Maybe you got messed up in something that you, you know you shouldn't have been involved in and now it's left you with a broken heart. So what now? What do you do now? What do you do with a broken heart? The title of my message tonight is How to Heal a Broken Heart. What do you do? Do you hide? Do you isolate yourself to try and protect yourself? Or do you, you do the opposite? Do you throw yourself at people seeking so desperately for love and, and attention and validation? Or do you let go of responsibilities? Let yourself off the hook. Choose to live for yourself, living and pursuing whatever makes you feel good, even just to ease the pain for a little while. Or do you find a way to heal your broken heart? You know, if you identify with any of those scenarios I just mentioned, I want you to know that you can find a way to heal your broken heart if you search in the Word of God. The Bible, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, it's an old book, thousands of years old, in fact, but it actually has some wisdom in it, some wisdom, some lessons that can teach us how we can heal our brokenness, how we can fix and heal our broken hearts. So tonight, how to heal a broken heart. I've got three points for you and I'm gonna give them to you in a random order. There's no like hierarchy of which is better. Three points of how to heal a broken heart. Number one, grieve. The word grieve, to grieve, it means to feel intense sorrow. You know, after something heartbreaking happens to you, after something horrible happens to you, you, you your first reaction is often that of shock. You don't know what to feel. You don't know how you feel. Your body is numb. You don't know what to do. And you, you don't have the mental capacity just yet to process how you feel. But when you're ready to, grieving, the process of grieving, it's actually a very healthy process that can help you in healing your heart. You know, it's okay to feel sadness. It's okay to feel deep sorrow. It's okay to face your sorrow. In fact, it's healthy. Ecclesiastes in the Bible, uh, chapter three, verses one to four, it says this, everything on earth has its own time and its own season. There's a time for birth and death, planting and reaping, for killing and healing, destroying and building, for crying and laughing, weeping, and dancing. This passage, it tells you and me that there is a right time for everything. There's a time for laughing and being happy. And there's a time for, for crying and for mourning. There's a time for dancing and celebration. And there's also time for weeping in grief. You know, there's power in recognizing the right time to grieve. When you allow yourself to face your intense sorrow at the right time, you can actually deal with your pain and be healed from it in Jesus' name. You know, Jesus, the one that Christianity is all about, He Himself grieves in the Bible. In the shortest verse in the Bible, John eleven thirty five, 35, two words, Jesus wept. Two words, so simple, but so profound. Because in this chapter, in the greater context of this chapter, Jesus, He has a friend, Lazarus, who's just died. And he's rocked up to Lazarus' house and he's with his family, with his sisters, and they are beside themselves. They are so upset, as you could imagine. They're brokenhearted, they're, they're weeping on the floor. And Jesus, the Son of God, and the person who's just about to raise Lazarus from the dead in a second, he gets down on his knees with them and he weeps too. Young person, I wanna tell you tonight, Jesus not only has the power to fix your situation, but He has love for you to cry with you. Jesus, He can fix your situation. He can heal your broken heart, but He also has the love for you to sit in your mess and cry with you. In the middle of your pain, in the middle of your grief, Jesus Christ is right there with you. You are not alone. 
how to heal a broken heart. Point two, guard. The Bible tells us to guard our hearts. So there's a time to grieve and there's also a time to guard your heart. Proverbs 4.23 says this, above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. You know, after your heart is broken, it becomes vulnerable to attacks from the enemy. After your heart's been torn in two, it's open and it's exposed and, and you leave yourself wide open and susceptible to intruders. Intruders such as resentment, intruders such as bitterness, uh, the need for approval and acceptance. All those intruders can sneak in if you don't guard your heart. Even anger towards God and resentment towards God can creep into your heart if you don't guard your heart. And when your heart becomes broken, you can't let these attacks sneak up on you because they'll not only, your heart will not only be affected from the event that happened to you, but it will, the, the effects will be prolonged because of this bitterness that has crept on in. If you don't guard your heart, you're not allowing it to heal. It's like when you get a scab, you know, when your body scabs, it's trying to heal. But when you pick at it, you just keep reopening the same wound. You're not allowing the process of healing to take place. You're allowing bitterness and resentment to enter your heart. So how do you guard your heart? Well, the answer is in the same verse that I just read. For everything you do flows from it for everything you do flows from your heart. So whatever you do after your heart is broken, I'm talking your behavior, your actions, your, your, your mindset, your thoughts, all of those things affect whether your heart is guarded or not. Proverbs 4.24, the very next verse says this, keep your mouth free from perversity. Keep corrupt talk far from your lips. Don't talk negatively even about the event that had happened to you, even about the person who had done that thing to you. Don't talk negatively about them. Don't talk uh, badly about the person who had wronged you because keeping negative talk about what happened out of your mouth will keep bitterness out of your heart. The next verse, 25. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. Focus on where you are now and where you are headed. Don't keep looking back at that event that hurt you or that person in, that part, in the past that damaged you. Don't keep digging up old problems and old hurt. If you keep looking forward, if you keep moving forward, you can guard your heart from what's behind you. In the next two verses, 26 and 27, give careful thought to the paths for your feet and be steadfast in all your ways. Do not turn to the right or the left. Keep your foot from evil. This is saying, don't live life willy nilly. Don't go wherever your feet want to take you. Be steadfast and follow God's plan, God's clear direction for your life. When you follow God's path, you guard your heart from the dangers of following your own way. How to heal a broken heart. Point three, give. You know, whilst it's important to guard your heart, it's also important to give your heart to the right person. I want to tell you tonight that the right person to give your heart to is God. He is the one who ultimately has the power to fully heal your broken heart. No one else can do that. You could give your heart to anything or anyone else in this world, but no one can heal your heart like God can. Let me prove it in the Bible. Psalm 147 verse 3. He, God, heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Isaiah 57 verse 15. This is God talking. I live in a high and holy place, but also with the one who is contrite and lowly in spirit to revive the spirit of the lonely and to revive the heart of the contrite. Psalm 34, 4 to 8. I sought the Lord and He answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to Him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. This poor man called out and the Lord, He heard him. He saved him out of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear Him and He delivers them. And this is my favorite part. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in Him. I'm sure there are many of you listening to me tonight 
who have been carrying around a broken heart. And many of you would have already given your heart to God. Many of you would call yourself Christians. But there are some of you listening who are carrying around a broken heart, but are yet to have given it to God. You know, grieving and guarding your heart, they're, they're both important when it comes to healing your heart. But the most important thing ever is letting God into your heart to fix the problem. If that's you tonight, if you have a broken heart, if something happened to you and you're carrying around this pain and you haven't given your heart to God, I wanna give you an opportunity tonight, right now, in your bedroom, in your living room, wherever you are, to give your heart to God. If that's you, I'm gonna pray a prayer, line by line, and I want you to repeat it back to me. Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, I've been carrying around a broken heart. Things have happened to me that I wanna move on from. I wanna give my heart to you, God. I wanna choose the life that you offer me. I'm now a Christian. I believe in you, amen. If you prayed that prayer tonight, we're about to go into hubs time in small groups. And if you prayed that prayer, I want you to tell your youth leader, or maybe you don't know who your youth leader is. Tell your friend that invited you to youth. We wanna help you, we wanna give you a Bible, we wanna have a conversation with you, and we wanna start you on this path of following Jesus. Thank you. Thank you very much, Hamish, for that wonderful message. I certainly got something out of it. I hope you guys did too. 10 a.m. this Sunday, get on online church. See you in the YouTube chat. Next week at 7 p.m. on the dot, we have Pastor Meg preaching for Friday Youth online. Bam! And that was it for tonight. See you guys in the breakout rooms. Oh, <laughs> 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 <laughs>